Good Sunday morning and welcome to the January 21st, 2024 edition of the Pastor's Porch. I'm Pastor Brian Schmidt, Pastor of Calvary Alliance Church in beautiful Hiawassee, Georgia. Although today's not quite such a beautiful day, it's kind of cloudy and uh, it's cool. That's uh, kind of why I'm at the Pastor's Church instead of the Pastor's Porch. Uh, we've just had a real bit of cold weather here lately and uh, so it's a lot nicer to be inside rather than outside. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Calvary Alliance Church, we're located on Highway 76 East in Hiawassee, Georgia, right across from the Towns County Public Schools in the Chattoog Harbor Plaza. And we welcome you to join with us. I'm just going to go ahead and give you the, the announcements as such. We do have our morning service on 1030 every Sunday morning. Uh, things kind of get kicked off around 10 o'clock. We have some coffee and some uh, Danish donuts, that kind of stuff. And we meet in, over. we call it the coffee room. So that's Sunday morning, 10.30. Uh, we have our Tuesday morning, ABF, uh, going through the book of Revelation. And we've been trying to get to Revelation chapter 19, uh, the second coming. But because of the bad weather in the area, uh, we haven't had ABF the last two weeks. And so uh, who knows? Jesus might come before we get to the talk about the second coming. He might actually do it. Uh, the rapture, at least, and that would be awesome. Uh, and then we have prayer meeting Wednesday at 6 o'clock. <coughs> and then we also have a Sunday morning ABF. Uh, meets at 9.30 down in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, Carol and Mark are sharing with us Ray Vanderlyn's video series, The Life and Times of the Messiah, something like that. And we're seeing historical places where Jesus lived and ministered. And it's been really, really neat. And so we encourage you to come to those events as you're able to. All right. But today, uh, I want to think about the world's perception of beauty as we get going. All right. When we think of beauty, we think about physical beauty and people who are just gorgeous on the outside. Uh, people's 2023 sexiest man alive. Uh, do you know who that was? All right. I'm going to lead up to it. Because there's, there's some names here I don't even recognize, and then there's some that I do, and it's like, all right, so here's the top 10, supposedly the beautiful guys, all right? So this, this is the sexiest man alive from people's 2023. Uh, Ped, Pedro Pascal, never heard of him. Timothy Chalamet, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you have no idea either, probably. Usher, I've heard of. Jamie Foxx, I've heard of. Jason Kelsey, Lenny uh Kravitz but the the number one guy Patrick Dempsey now I've heard of his name and I kind of recognized him when I looked it up but anyway so beautiful people those are beautiful men and then not to leave the women out done uh people's 2023 20, the beautiful issue right uh the top 10 and and these are ladies that I've heard of most of them Sama Hayek Lizzo I haven't heard of Lizzo Margot Robbie it sounds a little familiar Cheryl Lee Ralph Jamie Lee Curtis I've heard of uh, Rihanna, I know I've heard of her. Ali Wong, haven't heard of it, but the number one, uh, the beautiful woman, uh, Melissa McCarthy. Or Melissa McCarthy, all right? So that's People's 2023, Sexy Say Yes Man and Most Beautiful Women, all right? And so when we think about beauty, oftentimes the world thinks about outward beauty. There's also charitable beauty, all right? People who are beautiful uh, just because of the things they do. It might be financial philanthropy, uh, like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Buffett, Buff, Buffett, all right? I almost said Buffet. Buffett, Andrew Carnegie, Elon Musk, uh, the most generous human alive. Uh, now, he's been dead for some time. I, I've never heard of this guy before, but a guy named Jamsitsji Tata. He was an Indian from India. Uh, he gave over $100 billion to charity, all right? Uh, so there's financial ph philanthropy. There's social religious philanthropy. People like Jane Addams, Clara Barton, Mother Teresa comes to mind, all right? So these are beautiful people because of the charity uh, that they're involved in. And then there's popular beauty, people who are beautiful just because they're popular, all right? Uh, Hollywood's beautiful people, quote unquote. Uh, these are the red carpet walkers, all right? And, and even in the dictionary, there's definitions for beautiful people. Miriam Webster says, wealthy or famous people whose lifestyle is usually expensive and well publicized. Cambridge Dictionary says, fashionable rich people. Wiktionary, 
uh, fashionable, privileged, glamorous people, especially those belonging to international high society. All right, these would be the people that have stars on Hollywood Boulevard. Now, some examples of these kind of beautiful, quote unquote, people. You might have the Kardashians, uh, the Royals, Meghan and Harry, and I don't care if I didn't hear another thing about them. The Obamas, all right? You, you could probably think of others, all right? And, and so there's a lot of interest in beautiful people. It's in the magazines. It's on TV shows such as Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, Entertainment Tonight. Social media is just covered with beautiful people, quote-unquote, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. Oh, goodness, beautiful people. I want to talk about beautiful people today. Now, you and I, as believers in Jesus, we might not be Hollywood beautiful, all right? A beauty that's on the outside. We might not be the sexiest uh, person alive. We might not be the most charitable person. We might not be the most popular. We may not be what the world calls beautiful people. But you know what? We as believers, followers of Jesus, we must be beautiful on the inside. A beauty that radiates outwardly from a relationship with Jesus on the inside. Peter said as much about Christian women in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 4. I'm not going to read those again. We read them two weeks ago, all right? But Peter said, hey, don't worry about the outward. You got to worry about the inside, all right? And, and while verses 3 and 4 are specifically addressed to women, there are principles here for all believers. And Peter goes on in verses 8 through 12 to describe a beautiful Christian. One who is beautiful on the inside, and it's evidenced on the outside. All right? Uh, so First Peter chapter 3, verses uh, 8 through 12 is what I'm going to read right now. It says, finally, all of you, all right, not just the women and not just men who we addressed last week. <coughs> but he says, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Peter tells us here that we as believers in Jesus must live beautiful Christ-like lives. But first, to be beautiful, our first point today is don't be, what's the opposite of beautiful? Ugly, all right? Don't be ugly. And Peter here, he gives us some characteristics of ugliness, all right? Uh, don't be ugly. First of all, don't return. Don't repay evil for evil. All right. He said that there in verse number nine, not returning evil for evil. And that, that idea of returning, repaying means to give back. All right. And evil there is, is just a generic Greek word for everything that's bad, evil in the widest sense. It's an inward malice, an inwardly foul rottenness, uh, wickedness. All right. Now, not returning, re repaying evil for evil. You know, ugly Christians fight back. Ugly Christians don't get even, they get ahead, all right? Our fleshly proud human nature is difficult to handle in this area, you know it, right? If someone treats us wrong, what do we wanna do? We wanna treat them wrongly in return. You pull out in front of me on the road, uh, then I'm gonna ride your bumper. i just show you how much I, I don't like what you did to me, all right? But we as believers are not supposed to be that way. We are not to repay evil with evil, all right? We're not supposed to try to get back and get revenge or get ahead. That's what ugly people do, all right? First Thessalonians 5.15, Paul says, see then that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. But always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. And Romans 12, 17, repay no one evil for evil. Ugly Christians uh, return, repay evil for evil. So don't do that, all right? Don't be ugly. Secondly, don't be ugly. Not reviling for reviling. Don't give insult to insult, all right? Uh, it's so easy when someone insults us verbally to reply with our own insult. And there's many times where I wish I could, but I'm just not fast enough 
quick enough to think of a good comeback. But that's our human nature, all right? Uh, perhaps one of the most famous insults in history is your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. You know where that's from? That's from Monte Python's Quest for the Holy Gale, where the French are insulting the English. And, and sometimes we want to insult back. When people insult us, we want to come back uh, with something that's just as good. But we, as believers, are not supposed to be ugly. All right, we're not supposed to return insult for insult. Isaiah 53 verse 7 gives us the example of Jesus prophetically. It says he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. All right, prophetically, Jesus uh, is our example. But then also we have it recorded mark 15 verses 4 and 5 then pilate asked jesus again saying do you answer nothing see how many things they testify against you but jesus answered nothing so that pilate marvel i mean jesus the son of god they're heaping insult after insult upon him and yet he did not insult them back but stayed quiet all right don't be ugly don't return evil for evil don't return insult with insult and then he also says in verse number 10 there, let him refrain his ton tongue from evil. Keep your tongue from evil. Uh, keep means to cease, to hinder. It's really interesting. Luke 8, 24, it talks about Jesus uh, stilling the waves. And it says that the wind and waves ceased and stopped. That's that word to keep. All right. Acts 5, 42, the disciples did not cease, quit teaching and preaching they didn't keep from doing it they kept on doing it all right but it says that we must keep our tongue from evil and that's the same word that was in verse 9 there that word for evil and wickedness in the widest sense all right very simply ugly christians have ugly mouths and this is not to be all right christians should not tell off color jokes christians should not have inappropriate comments and and this can be hard because sometimes these things can be kind of funny we're not to take the lord's name in vain we are not to cuss and swear we're not to use hurtful cutting comments those are all examples of ugly speech wicked ugly mouths don't have an ugly mouth paul said in ephesians 4 29 let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth don't have an ugly mouth all right ugly christians we don't want to be ugly, all right? Keep from speaking deceit, all right? Not just ugliness uh, in our speech, but deceit, all right? And, and the word keep, has, uh, deceit here, has the idea of baiting, of decoys, of taking advantage of someone, especially those who are weak and naive. It means to not tell the truth in order to get your own way. All right, and ugly Christians lie. They twist the truth to get their way. They lie on their taxes. They lie about their age. Who knows what all they lie about? They lie, I don't know. I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, all right? But that's what ugly Christians do. They lie to get some advantage. And we as believers are not to be ugly. Ephesians 4, 25, therefore putting away lying. Get rid of it. Get rid of that deceit. He goes on and says, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of of one another all right so ugly christians don't be ugly don't return uh wickedness for wickedness don't return insult for insult uh don't have ugly speech and don't speak to see and then the final characteristic of an ugly christian that we're looking at here uh peter says verse 11 let him turn away from evil all right turn away from evil evil is a characteristic of ugliness and uh, it's really interesting that word turn away comes from a Greek word which says ek, which means out from and to, and klino, which means to bend, all right? It means to bow out, to turn away. Uh, and, and to fully, one commentator said this, to fully avoid by deliberate, decisive rejection, all right? Ugly Christians welcome all kinds of wicked, worthless activity and situations. Social media, the internet, cable, satellite TV, music, movies, all kinds of things that ugly Christians go after that's just evil. 
But we need to purposefully, intentionally reject those th kind of things, to turn away, to bow out as it were. Romans 16, 17 says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine you've learned and avoid them, all right? So those who cause divisions and offenses uh, who are ugly, we're, we're to purposefully avoid them. All right, and 3 John verse 11 says, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God. And get this, he who does evil has not even seen God. It, even your salvation can be questioned if you keep after uh, evil things. All right, but that's all ugliness. And, and Peter doesn't want us to be ugly. He wants us to be beautiful, beautiful believers, be beautiful. And it gives us characteristics of those who are beautiful. First of all, be of one mind. All right? Be of one mind. That's in verse number eight. Finally, all of you be of one mind. All right? Uh, this word means to be harmonious. It means to be agreeable. And what's really interesting about this word is that there's an element of humility in this word. All right? Being able to think of others more than one's self. Ugly, proud Christians want their own way. Beautiful Christians humbly work with others, even if it means things are not going their way or, or doing things the way that they think they ought to be done. Be of one mind. Humbly say, hey, you know what? Excuse me. I'd like to do it this way, but if everybody else wants to do it another way, I'm okay with that. I'm good. All right, Romans 12, 16, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Be of one mind. That's what a beautiful Christian does. Be, of, be beautiful. Also, we need to be compassionate. It says there in verse 9 again, verse 8, finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. That word compassion means to be sympathetic, to suffer or feel like another, to identify with somebody in, in, in their their needs or in their joys, all right? But the, I, the, the key word here, I think, is listen, listen, all right? Ugly Christians think about themselves and want to talk about themselves. Beautiful Christians Think about others and listen to others. Romans chapter 12, verse 15, rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. All right? So we need to listen. All right? Be compassionate. Beautiful Christians are of one mind. Beautiful Christians are compassionate. And then thirdly, beautiful Christians love one another. Again, verse number eight, love as brothers. Affectionate, friendly love, brotherly love. And... I mean, we know what this means. I don't need to talk about it much. Paul said in Romans 12, 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. That goes to that one mind humble thing, all right? But be kindly affectionate. Have, have a, a desire to hang out with your church family and with other believers and then to just enjoy being with one another and caring for one another and having a good time with one another and reaching out to one all different kinds of things that we can do as we love one another and then he says be tender-hearted tender-hearted and this is a funny word uh it's a compound word in the greek and it has the idea of good and then the visceral organs all right talking about your belly all right and and in some other verses it talks about bowels of compassion what in the world, all right? It's talking about having good insights, but it, it, I, I summed it in my notes as gut-level sympathy. Gut-level, all right? It's just not a superficial, oh, yeah, hey, I care about you. But it, it comes from your deep inside of you that you have a compassion. You have a tenderness for others. This word is also used in Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. All right, and so we need to be of one mind, be compassionate, love one another, be tender-hearted. The fifth characteristic of a beautiful Christian is be humble, be humble. Now, this is kind of interesting because in verse 8, in the New King James, the word is courteous, courteous, all right? And it's also in the King James Version, if you have that. But uh, the meaning of the word is be humble. All right, it comes from a Greek word that means 
from low, it means to be humble. Moderation is re regulated by inner perspective. One commentator said this about the word. It's an inside out virtue produced by, get this, comparing ourselves to the Lord, and then I put in parentheses, rather than to others. Another commentator said this, for the believer, humility means living in complete dependence on the Lord with no reliance on the self. All right, now get this. Ugly Christians compare themselves to others with the purpose of wanting to be better than others, to being more important than others, to be looking better than others. All right. But that's not the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be beautiful Christians. Beautiful Christians do not compare themselves to others, measure themselves up with others to say, hey, you know, I'm a better Christian than so-and-so because I do this and I do that. No, beautiful Christians, get this, compare themselves to Jesus. And when we compare ourselves to Jesus, what happens? We realize that, hey, we got a long way to go. We're not all that. All right, Colossians 3.12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, and then humility, meekness, long-suffering. Be humble. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but think soberly. All right, so beautiful Christians are of one mind. They're compassionate. They love one another. They're tender-hearted. They're humble. They're courteous. And, and then uh, beautiful Christians bless those who treat them poorly all right it says they're not returning evil for evil reveling but on the contrary blessing all right blessing uh the greek word is eulogio all right we get our english word eulogy all right it means to speak well of to praise <clears throat> the definition of a eulogy like what you hear at a funeral is a speech or piece of writing that praises someone or something highly typically someone who has just died. Now, this is easy to do for people that you like and people who like you. But Peter says we're here, supposed to do it for everybody. And it, so it's difficult to bless those who don't like you and treat you wrongly. And yet that's what a beautiful Christian does. They treat uh, highly. They treat, speak positively about everybody. And sometimes maybe it's hard to find something good to say about somebody, especially those who treat you wrongly. But like the old rabbit in one of those Disney movies says, if you can't say anything don't nice, don't say anything at all. Luke 6, 28, bless those who curse you and pray for those <coughs> who spitefully use you. Bless those who treat you poorly. And then a seventh, char seventh characteristic of a, a beautiful Christian <coughs> is that they do good. Verse 11 says, let him turn away from evil and do good. All right. Poeo agathos. It's the opposite of kakos, which is the evil and the wicked that we talked about with ugly Christians. All right. All right. It's the opposite of that. All right. This is intrinsically good, good in nature, that which is useful, pleasant, excellent, honorable. All right. It describes that which or originates from God and is empowered by him for life through faith. All right. It's the same word that's used in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, and also in verse 23, where the servants, where the, the master comes and he's rewarding the servants that have done well. And what does he say? He says, well done, good and faithful servant. That word good is the same word that we're looking at here in First Peter. Now, ugly believers do ugly things, but beautiful believers do do beautiful things. Romans 12, 9, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Get this, cling, hold on to that which is good. All right. And so uh, some other verses I got here, uh, Romans 12, 21, do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. All right. Overcome the kakos with the agathos. All right. Luke 6, 27, but I say to you who here love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, not just the people you get along with, but even those that treat you poorly. And then we read 3 John verse 11 earlier, beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. All right, so beautiful Christians are of one mind. They are compassionate. They love one another. They're tender hearted. They're humble. They bless those who treat them poorly and they do good. And then finally, it says here in verse number 11, let him seek peace and 
pursue it. All right, that idea of seek has to idea of seeking by inquiring to investigate to reach a binding resolution to search uh, to get to the bottom of something. All right. It's an intentional search and investigation into a matter. Matthew 6, 30, 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God. There's that word seek, all right? And then he says, pursue, seek and pursue. And the word pursue is to aggressively chase like a hunter pursuing his prey, like a police officer chasing a crook, uh, sometimes over at the bus garage. They have the TV show Cops on Bad boy, bad boy, what are you going to do when they come for you? And it shows cops chasing aggressively, trying to get the bad guy. Uh, and then even to persecute something, all right? And that's that's how it's used in the New Testament a lot, this word for pursue. It means to persecute, uh, to chase down, all right? First Thessalonians 5.5 5 says, Always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. And First Timothy 6.11 says, Pursue righteousness, all right? Those were two other things, pursue good and pursue righteousness. But here Peter says, pursue, seek and pursue what? Peace, peace. All right, the word peace has the idea of unity, quietness, rest, welfare, wholeness. Now, get this, ugly Christians like to stir up trouble and division. There's some Christians who are ugly and they're always looking for a fight. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. But beautiful Christians work hard at bringing people together in Jesus. Now, it doesn't mean we agree with everybody. It doesn't mean that we uh, think everybody's doing okay, all right? No, we, we point out evil when it's evil and we don't tolerate what is evil. But then again, we also don't look for a fight all the time and, 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 and try to stir up things, all right? Ugly Christians like to stir up trouble. Beautiful Christians work hard at bringing people together in Jesus. Romans chapter 14, verse 19, therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may be edified, built up. And Hebrews 12, 14 says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue, seek peace. I, and, and boy, I gotta tell you, this one hits me, all right? Because I know on Facebook, I love to do gotcha back years ago. You know, I had my political opinions. I had my 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 thoughts and and I would sometimes post things that, with a purpose of stirring things up. And I realize that as an ambassador of Christ, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be trying to reconcile people to Christ. And if I'm stirring the pot, I'm probably shoving people away. I'm pushing people away instead of bringing people in to a place where I can tell them about Jesus, all right? So beautiful Christians are of one mind. They're compassionate. They love one another. They're tenderhearted. They're humble. All right, compassionate. They they uh, bless those who treat them poorly and, and they do good and they seek and pursue peace. That is being a beautiful Christian. And folks, that is the Jesus way. This is how Jesus lived. Now, to wrap this up, conclusion, there's consequences for these things. All right, the blessings of living a beautiful Christ-like life. Uh, we see these in verse number 12. It says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. All right. When we live a beautiful life, when we're beautiful people, when we're beautiful Christians, the Lord sees us. He pays attention to us, all right? And, and then it goes on and he says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. Our prayer lives are better for being beautiful Christians because then the Lord hears us and then the Lord is for us. It says, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The opposite is going to be true. If he's against those who do evil, he's for those who do righteous. And so when we live beautiful lives as believers, the Lord is on our side and he wants to bless us. All right, He wants to. He says in verse 9, knowing that you were called to this, Jesus is calling us that you may inherit a blessing. How do we inherit that blessing? By living a beautiful life. And then the consequences? All right, of not living a beautiful Christ-like life, all right, the consequences of being an ugly Christian are just the opposite of the blessings of being a beautiful Christian, all right? It's being unseen by God. If you're an ugly Christian, God's not so inclined to keep his eye on you, all right? And then unanswered prayer, 
by God. It, when we live ugly lives, the Lord's not so inclined to listen to us and to want to answer our prayers. And then unblessed. When we live ugly lives, wicked lives, you know, why should God bless us? We're not honoring him, right? Living a beautiful life, being a beautiful Christian. This is the Jesus way. We have the example of Jesus in Acts 10, 38, but how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need the same empowering by the Holy Spirit. But as we have that power, of the Holy Spirit. Get this, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him, all right? We have the example of Jesus who lived a beautiful life. And then we have the words, the exhortation of Jesus. Matthew chapter five, verses three through 12. And this will close the sermon. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right, the poor in spirit. Beautiful people are poor in spirit. Blessed, beautiful are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed, beautiful are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed or beautiful are the those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed, beautiful are the merciful, for they shall be uh, obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed, beautiful are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. You all right? People can't handle a beautiful Christian because it brings conviction to them and they realize there's something that they're doing wrong. And instead of accepting that, they lash out and try to drag the beautiful down. They try to make the beautiful ugly. All right, don't fall for it, all right? And say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, though, and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven for being a beautiful person, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Our Heavenly Father, God, help us not to be ugly believers, but Lord, help us to be beautiful believers, beautiful Christians, beautiful people in your eyes. Lord, we pray that you help us to live lives that are beautiful to that are evidence to others that we are beautiful on the inside so much that it's evident on the outside. And we have a testimony of others that we are like Jesus. And then we can bring others to a saving knowledge of Christ. Help us not to be ugly. Help us to be beautiful. By the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit within us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining with us on the video today. If you have any questions, please email me. I don't have my little note card here, but bkschmidt65 at gmail.com. bkschmidt65 at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you if you have any questions or prayer requests. And then our church website, calvaryalliancechurch.com. calvaryalliancechurch.com. And then we are part of the Christian Missionary Alliance, cmalliance.org. Thank you for joining with us on the video. We'll talk to you again soon. God bless.